This is A Different Perspective with Kevin Randall. A retired U.S. Lieutenant Colonel, Kevin Randall has been studying UFOs for nearly 50 years. Kevin has investigated some of the most famous UFO cases in the world and has been consulted for dozens of documentaries about UFOs. Considered one of the leading experts into the Roswell UFO crash of 1947, Kevin has written more than 25 books about UFOs, including the recently published Roswell in the 21st Century. Now, here is the host of A Different Perspective, Kevin Randall. And we are back after a brief hiatus with another special edition, special report of A Different Perspective. And truly, I am the host, Kevin Randall. For those of you who have been paying attention to my blog, which allows me to say, it's at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com, you'll notice I do a lot of UFO stuff, but I also deal with um, some of the treasure hunting programs and the searches for gold, like the Curse of Oak Island. And I've been following Treasure Quest, uh, Snake Island, during its inception. One of the people on that was uh, Captain Keith Cappy Plaskett, uh, and I managed to make contact with him. So we'll be chatting with him about his experiences with that program and where things um, have gone and uh, where they may be going and from what he knows. I will tell you that uh, he has a long and illustrious career in the armed forces, having served in many wars, including Vietnam and Iraq. He joined the military right out of uh, school and took on some of the most dangerous assignments, including disposing of mines and bombs, paratrooping, and diving as a Navy frogman. He later became a sea captain and served on missions to protect several U.S. presidents. More recently, Captain Keith taught classes on terrorism and bomb dismantling. Besides his military background, Captain Keith also has a great deal of experience with underwater excavations and archaeology. He currently lives and works in Peru, though I understand he's now visiting in Florida. I just throw that in for some reason. Um, but he lives and works in Peru, finding and documenting underwater shipwrecks and such things. He is also collaborating with the Peruvian government to develop an underwater archaeology program to help preserve their archaeological heritage. And since his credentials have been questioned on many occasions, and I've seen some of that stuff online, I will let you know I have seen and have a copy of his DD Form 214, which gives me his military background, so I know exactly what it is, and I have seen nothing in his uh, statements that he has made about that that are untrue. I have also have uh, various copies of his master certificates, that uh, shows he is capable of captaining uh, various sizes of um, boats and ships and that sort of thing on many oceans and many lands. I have found nothing to suggest that he has intentionally misrepresented his record. Captain Keith, welcome to A Different Perspective. Hey, Kevin. Thank you uh, for having me on. I been interested in Treasure Quest, Snake Island, since I first blundered into it by mistake <laughs> and um, found it interesting, uh, found some of the stuff that they were doing interesting. How did you get involved with that program? You know, I'm, uh, I was actually probably one, one of the only or the only uh, active, uh, you know, undersea explorer, um, you know, in, in with the rest of the, the cast on there. And so... Um, I was well. I was living in Peru, and let me let me set the record straight on this part. Uh, I'm actually over in Brazil right now. I've been in Brazil for uh, almost three years, uh, but I, I'm getting ready to go back to Peru in about ten days. I've got um, I've got a project there, an undersea project that I'm getting ready to go work on. But how I got involved was I when I, at that time when when uh, Discovery Channel was uh, putting this together. Apparently, the production company that was working with them or for them, I'm not sure. Uh, had sent out a uh, a flyer uh, from L.A. Their offices in L.A. seeking treasure hunters, anybody that wants to uh, make a show, a treasure hunt show, I guess. And so, I, of course, I never seen any of that that uh, any of those brochures or any of that information. Uh, somehow they got a hold of me, and I'm not really sure how they did. But I was on my way out the door. I checked my email for the last time when I was in uh, up in northern Peru, and. Uh, I, I have my uh, grandsons. I've got five grandsons. Uh, one of them actually is on Pittsburgh Pirate uh, baseball team. He's got drafted uh, 
uh, college drafted just last uh, just a few months ago actually. And uh, but the other grandsons I have, um, I promised them if they once they graduate high school, turn 18, graduate high school, that I'd bring them down to uh, Peru. So they can live with the community people and see what life's about, uh, how other people live outside the United States, uh, to give them a give them a better perspective, so to speak. <laughs> no, it's yeah. a it's a it's a different perspective. Oh, for sure, for sure, <laughs> culture shock for most people. But I wanted them to experience that before they started the university, and they can actually have a better uh, feel of what what are the people, how they live, and you know. You know, we're not in this uh, box that we're in in the United States sometimes if you never get out. So um, anyway, um, I was on the way out to the Amazon. I, I, I was teaching them to scuba dive and, and take them to the Amazon juggle. That was the three things uh, my goals and my plans were for the three months they're going to be with me. So I was on the way out uh, with my first grandson, Christian, and we were heading to the Amazon. And so we went up to the Amazon for a few weeks and they had contacted me and they, they being the Discovery Channel? The the uh, Mac Pictures production company, who's actually doing the production work for for Discovery. They've contact, I think they've contracted through Discovery Channel. And so they contacted me, and uh, and so I sent an email back real quickly because I was on the way out. And I said, look, uh, I'm on my way out to the Amazon, and um, I will get, I'll be gone for a few couple weeks. And so as soon as I get back, I'll, I'll give you a call and see what this is all about. So I did. Had a great time in the Amazon and uh, came back. I contacted them and they started asking me about, um, you know, what what I was doing in Peru and, and some of the projects that I was working on. And uh, one of them being was the um, uh, the project that where I was putting together the first marine archaeology program in South America and, and with two universities in Peru. So I, I was working on that, and that that was a seven year uh, project uh, to get get that portion of my uh, my life taken care of as far as so trying, you so, trying to leave so, something back you know leave something behind yeah so so you contacted them they got back in touch with you and what transpired from there um i had several interviews with them um just like we're doing now basically and sent them a lot of information about you know like i say the projects i was working on i was in i was in search of el dorado like everybody else that goes to south america it seems like and uh, there was seven lost cities, five in North Peru and, and two in in, uh, in South Ecuador. And so I sent them all this information. I did all these interviews, and I was I, they put their package together with the other cast members, which I hadn't knew anything about. I never met them or knew even who they were um, interviewing. So all of a sudden, um, they said, well, we're going to do a chem test. And I'm thinking, what's a chem test? I, you know, I've never done anything on TV, so I, I wasn't really sure with some, you know, some of the language. So I found out that it's a chemical test to see how we bond or how we look on camera, uh, you know, when we're interacting with each other. So they're casting, they're basically casting it like it's a television program as opposed to uh, going out and you, you calling them and saying, hey, I'm looking for this treasure, you want to come along type thing. They're casting a program with an eye to look for a treasure. Yes, that's apparently what what they were doing. Um, they were trying to put together a reality TV show, and uh, so um, we'll get into that a little bit later. But <laughs> yeah, so that we we all came out to um, Hollywood, and we took a boat out to um, an island out there, and off off of uh, uh, Los Angeles, I guess. Um, and we just were doing some casting out there and making some, you know, videos and, and all that. And so they put their package together, and I think they sent it to Discovery, and we were picked up. And so um, next thing I know, and this was a period of about probably three or four months uh, that this happened. And so next thing I know, I'm getting a ticket to go to Brazil. And they sent me a little bit of information about the show. Um, the show was The Treasure of the Trinity. And it was, um, it's basically the history of when the first uh, conquistador, you know, Alexo Garcia, came uh, to Brazil, South Brazil, Santa Catalina Island, and got a, um, a handful of men and went into the, uh, the jungle. Um, and I'm assuming that he probably went across the uh, pre-colonial uh, trail called the Pebru Trail, which is a, a, a footpath 
that connects the Atlantic and the Pacific, which most people don't even know anything about or even heard of. Um, that was that would have been the easiest way for him to get across. But he was heading with this group into the jungle, and he met with the Guani tribes, and he uh, enlisted like 2,000 Guani tribes. And they're, 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 of course, the local population. They're the indigenous peoples. Yeah, they're the indigenous Indians of that area. And so um, he enlisted 2,000 of them. He continued on to the Andes of Peru, which was actually the southern region of uh, the uh, Inca Empire. Uh, King Huanicapa was actually in, in uh, north and the second part of his empire, which was uh, uh, up in uh, um, Ecuador, in Quito, and he was all the way up there. So when these guys came across with the Guani Indians, they were, you know, robbing and stealing all the gold and silver they could. Mount Potosi is in Bolivia, and that's that's uh, an active, the biggest actually silver mine in the world, which is still active right now. And so he was in that area, and so they. They were able to attack these towns and get a lot of the uh, the priests and their pagan religion. They had a lot of gold ornaments and, and they wore a lot of gold ornaments. And he was able to capture these things and head back to uh, to Brazil, back to Cata Catalina. And we're gonna we're gonna have to take a break here, okay. as you can tell. When we come <laughs> back, we'll talk about Snake Island specifically and how you got out there and what the snakes were doing. We will be right back right after this. Okay. I am joined by Captain Keith Plasquette, who is... Uh, Cappy from Treasure Quest Snake Island. And when we left, we were talking about the conquistadors and a bunch of people stealing gold and silver from the Inca. We're going to move it back to Brazil now um, and Snake Island. So Discovery is putting together this program. You're involved in it. You're in Brazil. Um, and the big, the big um, uh, thing about this is Snake Island, where the, was the Golden Lance which is a viper, a pit viper, I believe, uh, one of the deadliest snakes in the world, have right. taken over this island, and supposedly the treasure is hidden on this island. So you're in Brazil. Did you know you were going to end up on Snake Island, and how did you get out there? Well, no, I, we didn't really know anything about what was happening um, once I first got there um, to, to Brazil. We flew into São Paulo, and then we uh, went to an island called uh, Iabela, and that's where the treasure was taken eventually uh, by Cavendish when he robbed robbed it from the uh, monastery in uh, the city on the coast there. Um, name escapes me real quick, but um, yeah. It, so anyway, the, the island is 20 miles off the, off this coastal city. And so one of the, um, the monks had, had followed, I guess, the trail and, and captured that treasure, brought it back. And when they were kicked out by the king of Portugal, uh, because they'd made all these Jesuit missions and they were protecting all the indigenous Indians and they were actually growing more uh, sugar cane than, than the uh, local owners. And the local owners wanted that land and they wanted those workers. So the Jesuits were kicked out. And so this, what we believe the story happened was they took that treasure that they brought back from, uh, from the Incas that they'd captured and plant, planted it on Snake Island because it would have been, um, you know, basically... Nobody could have got on the island without getting, you know, killed, eaten, or whatever by these snakes. And so that was, uh, we believe they were going to come back years later and, and, and get the, uh, you know, get the uh, treasure. And they, they buried other treasure in other places, uh, some of this treasure in other places around the missions that they had. And uh, So you're, you're there in Brazil now with these people that you basically just met. Correct. Uh, you've bonded so to bit. Um, you're on a boat 20 miles off the coast of Brazil. And you're now you're going to be going on to Snake Island to see the uh, to find the treasure. Yeah, that's correct. And the the uh, name of the city where the where the monastery was is, is um, oh, I forgot it again. Well, anyway, I was on we were on the boat on the island, and one of the crews was split up into two crews and went um, went on the island. Um, part of the crew went there, and the other crew part with me on the boat stayed on the boat. 
And so we were doing uh, double, uh, double crew shots, basically. And um, this, this island was, you know, it was totally infested with snakes. I ended up, they ended up getting me on the island eventually. I hate snakes. And uh, Santos was the name of that city. I couldn't remember uh, off the island, off the, off the uh, coast there. But I got on the island, and it was, it was, this was no kidding. These snakes were everywhere, and there was a very small trail that we, we had to go uh, to transverse the island up to the lighthouse and then to the other end of the island. And, uh, and so this trail in, in some places were very, was very slick when we were, you know, heading in the, uh, elevated situation. And sometimes, you know, it would slip a little bit, but if you ever slipped to the point where you fell into the bush, um, you, you were going to be, um, uh, you're going to be, you never, there's no way we'd make it out. If you got bit once, you might make it, but if twice, these, these snakes are so venomous that um, it's, the poachers go on, on this island. If they, you get a snake that's, say, five feet long, they sell them for $40,000 because they, they use this venom to uh, do medical research for cancer and other, other types of diseases. Well, how, so, big, how big is the crew traipsing around the island? There's you and the people who are supposedly exploring for the treasure, but you've got cameramen and sound men and a doctor and all of this sort of thing? Yeah, we've got, um, well, first of all, we've got the government folks that uh, the Institute of Bhutan Tan uh, in uh, San Paulo. We had these these uh, snake folks, and we had uh, two doctors, one that stayed uh, closer on land to the uh, to the evacuation place, and one of the doctors uh, was w with us, a, a specialized snake doctor. And so we had venom in both places. You mean anti-venom? Anti-venom. I mean, I mean anti-venom, excuse me, anti-venom. And, and so he was, we were carrying this, and we had the doctors. We had our, our cast, five people. We had um, two cameramen, and we had uh, a sound man. And we had, uh, that was it, basically, on there. On the island. We, they, they, didn't, they didn't really like, they said this is the most people that's ever been on the island at one time, you know, that they'd, they'd taken on the island. And so, uh, because it, well, it how is... Much how much time did you actually spend on the island looking for the treasure? Um, I would say um, the shooting was probably about probably a week long, right around a week. But you weren't staying on the island that whole week. I wasn't. I stayed on the boat. <laughs> but no, no, we would we would transverse back and forth uh, from the island to the boat. Um, they, I think they, they, the crew, the other crew that was on the island stayed on the island one night. Because they, they were doing night scenes on the island with the golden lit lance head. So you're, you're, you're saying they were doing night scenes? I mean, they were filming stuff to to cut into it, like you were on the island all night. Well, yeah, I mean, they were they were on the island all night, but they, um, like I said, they were they were filming. They were filming different things. What you know, what's it like on the island at night, type of thing. You know, uh, where's the snakes at? You know, we had infrared lights to. To light up the snakes and this type of thing. How well, often? Uh, well, I was going to say, um, how much treasure hunting did you actually do during that week you were there? Well, I was, um, like I said, I stayed on the boat most of the time. Uh, we we had um, the team that was on the island. They had all the sophisticated electronics, so they could. They were looking for caves, basically. We were looking for caves to see where this stuff might have been stashed. And so they scoured the island uh, fairly quickly. It's not that big of an island, pretty small island actually. And uh, yeah, so and my side of it was I was, you know, I'm, they want me to go on the island. I said, look, I'm the I'm the sea captain here, you know. It's like plus I hate snakes. And uh, <laughs> and so I said, what am I, who's going to rescue guys if if I go over and I get killed by a snake or I get beaten by a snake? You know, somebody's got to get this, you know. Somebody's got to re be the rescuer here, you know. Let us think about this. And so, um, you know, then the dang boat started sinking, and that was that was no kidding. <laughs> and uh, had to end up patching it, and then and that we headed back into Santos at that point, you know, because I I didn't want to stay out any longer. Plus, there was a storm coming. So you were there about a week, mm -hmm. all told, and you found hints that there was there had been a treasure there, or you found. Uh, indications it might have been moved. What did you find? 
Well, that's that's what's whatever you've seen on the video is what I've seen. So um, I wasn't there. They they found they found a box that uh, was apparently uh, a box that held held you know some kind of it was an old box, part of a box, part of a lid. I was gonna say they just found a lid. They couldn't really tell what it might have held and what it, how long it had been there, or anything about it. Yeah. Well, uh, from what I've seen, because like I said, I wasn't there on that on that particular part of the the, uh, the shooting, but. You know, I think personally I would have did a little digging. I and mean, they tried with a metal detector, but the metal detector only goes so far. It doesn't go that deep, you know. Being a, a treasure hunter myself, I would have I would have made some test holes in that cave where that box was at to see if there was something deeper. You know, if they missed, you know, but that's just me. I mean, you know. So that was that was pretty much the, the first season. There you're mucking about on the island. Um you found some hints that the treasure had been moved back to the mainland, I think, and they came back for the second season, and that's where things kind of went um, weird on us, I guess you would say. Well, what, what the thing was, we didn't find the treasure. Half the treasure was, was left at the Guanee Village. When, the, when the, um, Alexa Garcia and the 2,000 uh, Guanee Indians started coming back from Peru, uh, that half the Indians rebelled against the other half plus Garcia he was killed and apparently there must have been a Jesuit priest in there because that's how the, the treasure ended up at the Jesuit chapel there in Santos and so years later you know here comes you know John Cavendish the pirate over from Peru and, and he he uh, attacked the city and got the treasure took it to Iabella and then later they got it back and took it to uh, Snake Island but that's, you found no that's treasure. That's what we on, believe. You, I mean, we don't know for sure if that's the story. I mean, you know, that's. But but you found no treasure on the island. No, no, no treasure on the island. And you found there was no some... treasure. No treasure in season two. <laughs> I mean, so, season one, season one. Yeah. So we go to season two. We're now on the mainland, and I forget where you started out. Uh, Paraguay or Uruguay? No, uh, we we were we were still in Argentina. Uh, uh, we're on. We're on the Parni River in Argentina. Okay. That's where we started out where the, where they told us, I don't know where they got the information, but where they said the Indian village, the Guani village was that had the, where it was attacked. So the other half of that treasure was around there, they, they suspected. So that was a new treasure hunt at that point to try to figure out where, where that part of the treasure is. Because we're thinking so, the other treasures back, probably ended up back in uh, Portugal. So you're you're on the river, you're on your boat, you're maneuvering around there. Um, you end up in a, a town where they're talking to somebody who has a silver bar that he got from somewhere, and he claims it is part of this treasure. And that um, they met they met with him, and I don't know where you were at that point, but I know where I am at this point, which is I'm going to have to take another break here. When we come back, we'll talk about the second um, season of treasure quest snake island and get a little bit in, deeper into that uh, i've got a lot of stuff on the blog at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com that you can take a look at uh, my interpretations of this over the week or the months that it took place our uh, website is www.captainkeithpleskett that's all one word dot com if you want to take a look at that and take a look at the x zone broadcast network as well for uh, listings of other programs we will be back right after this I am here with Captain Keith Pleskett, he of Treasure Quest, Snake Island. We've moved into the second season, and we're going to have to move a little rapidly into this to get everything covered that I'd like to. Uh, you've, you started out in Argentina. You're, you're on the river. There was a, a point where you're at a, a town, and you hear somebody's got a piece of or a bar of silver that came from this this treasure trove, the treasure of the Trinity, and two or three of the people go out to meet with the guy. They see the bar that he wants ten thousand dollars for it, but they pay him two a thousand dollars to find out where he got it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's the storyline. Um, you know, nobody knows where that particular bar came from, and I'm I'm not even sure if that was even part of the Inca treasure. You know, it's, you don't really know. You know what? 
you know, the, the history on this whole thing is, is correct. And your listeners got to need to understand that they put together a storyline and they try to stick to the storyline with the with the history of it, what and what we're actually doing. And so, you know, we, we shoot, you know, hours and hours and hours and hundreds of scenes. And it ends up most 98 percent of those scenes are, are ended up on the editing room floor. They're cut. So they can make you look bad or make you look good. They can make the story do this, make the story do that. And so I think that's probably what you're, you're what, what's going on here, you know. But the point the point simply is they they met with a guy, he ha, he claimed to have a bar from the treasure, and they paid him money to find out where it came from. And then you guys go to that location. Yeah, we're t- at this point we're following clues. We're trying to follow clues to find out um, where this treasure might be. And so that that led us to. Uh, connection with the, the ancient or the old chiefs from the Guani Indians, and they had some old stories that that the uh, treasure might have been hidden in a cave. Well, wait before you before river. you before you got there, you went to the what is it the Reducción de Nuestra Señora de Santa Ana mission. Yes. Yeah, Santa Ana. That was that was on the way to the to the village. Uh, yes, the Santa Ana mission. Now we. We tracked but, but, through the jungle. We we um, we went down to the boat, uh, you know, got on the boat and traveled on the river, and then we traveled through the jungle and then we came up uh, on Santa Ana. But now, but but all of that was unnecessary. Well, you know, at this point, we don't really know. The cast members don't know. You know, we're I, just I, we're just following, <laughs> following directions. I understood. You know but, what I'm saying? <laughs> but those of us that those of us who have Google Earth, which is practically everybody in the free world, yeah, uh, we're able to plug in the name of the mission, and we see it's a tourist attraction, and there's a paved highway that goes right by it. And there's a town not long, not far away, and I, and I put this on the blog at kevinrandall.blogspot.com, that there was a was it a Sheridan Resort Hotel there which you could stay in for 300 bucks a night. So I'm wondering why were why are you traipsing through the jungle to get to this mission when you probably could have driven there? Well, probably the uh, it has something to do with the storyboard and and the producers that put this together. Um, yeah, I mean, hindsight, of course, we see all that, you know. But at the time, and we're 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 th- we're we're actually looking for clues. We're thinking we, you know, we got something going on here, you know. And uh, we're we're on the trail. We're on the trail of something. Go uh, silver bar, maybe that part of the treasure. I don't know. But when you get to the mission, isn't it kind of a dead giveaway that this is a tourist attraction? No, actually, uh, when we got to the mission, uh, we came out of the jungle and we come into this open field. And of course, yeah, it'd be. The lawn was was cut, I guess, and and uh, so there wasn't any tourists around, and I didn't we didn't see anybody else, but we went into the ruins, and started doing some metal detecting, and on the right on the one side of the ruins is a ancient uh, colonial era era um, graveyard, that that uh, the grave the grave robbers had been in there, um, you know, some years back, and had broke into the crypts and and broke into the coffins and the coffins were laying around open the stench was pretty pretty strong still from the from the death dead and stuff but yeah we uh, we shot in there and then we uh trekked back out and that was you know that was that that scene as far as we know you know we, we weren't staying in the sheraton hotel no, i'll say that but the point simply is the sheraton hotel is close by yeah. and it and it's yeah. not a it, it is it the program gave the impression that you guys had to trek through jungle for hours and hours and hours to get to this place as if it was some very remote area and it's, it's not remote at all. And I think that's one of the problems that uh, I know some of the people that I'm in contact with had with the program. Once we were able to locate the mission and, and see that sort of thing, we began to wonder about the reality of the whole program. Well, maybe the, maybe Discovery needs to rename this show, not reality, you know, this, this type of situation, not, not reality, uh, reality TV, but entertainment TV, you know, <laughs> that would be my well, take. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and so that uh, you found no treasure around the mission, of course, and you go off to meet with the with the local indigenous people. Correct. And, and they 
did they provide any clues for you? Yeah, we went to this uh, little village, and uh, there, you know, the, the, obviously there's, you know, there's roads and stuff that go into it, so there, you know, there's, they're, they're connected to civilization of some type. Yeah, I think I think the guy wearing the I think the guy wearing the old navy t-shirt was kind of a giveaway that they are connected to civilization. Yeah, yeah, it's there's not too many tribes in, in this day and age that aren't actually even some of the tribes in remote areas of the Amazon the, the people have made contact with them and given them things but um the the, the fact was that we had these old guys from the tribe and trying to pass down and getting the information out of them. And and so they put us on the the clue that that yet you know that this this um, this this treasure was probably you know passed down folklore probably in a cave somewhere. So then we started heading toward caves. I guess. I mean, I I wasn't part of any of this uh, putting it together. Neither was the rest of the cast members. This was totally done um, outside of our realm. We weren't really told a lot about a whole lot of the things. But, so. Uh, so yeah. when you say we're searching for clues, it's actually like the producer of the show searching for clues or laying the clues out for you. Well, um, that, that's kind of what we, you know, we, we didn't get our scripts until the next, you know, the, the storyline or whatever until the next, uh, the, the, the day before we, or not the day before, but that, that night or middle of the night, um, they would, they would give us a, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, type of thing. And so we're just following the, following the sheets, the story sheets that they give us. Did you, did you stay intense overnight? Out in the jungle? What did where, where did you where did you stay? Yeah, sometimes we did. Sometimes we um, you know, we had a, a, a place we had to be you know bust into an area where we had to be picked. You know, we had to get on a boat or or we left. You know, opening to the jungle or something. You know, so we we weren't always in we, we weren't always camping out. We were uh, staying in like a hostel, uh, some some few miles away. Well, the, the the only good thing about staying at the Sheridan Resort Hotel is it probably had HBO and you could have watched Game of Thrones, but that's a whole other <laughs> argument. Well, yeah. So so we're moving now. We're into the river. We're going up the river. Uh, at one point, your boat is trashed you, while you guys are out doing something that somebody gets on the boat and trashes it. Yeah, apparently uh, well, some of the local folks must have came around, and that's that's typical of any, any country over there in, in South America. It's, if, if you leave anything by itself, and you don't have a guard. They're gonna they're gonna try to steal whatever they can steal, and uh, somebody had got on there and trashed it. And that wasn't part of the storyline. That was something that happened. Uh, I'm not sure if it, if it was part of the storyline. Nobody was caught, so we just came back and the boat was trashed. So I, was, I, I can't was answer it, that question. Yeah. <laughs> was any was wouldn't have a, a production people somebody been staying with the boat? No, there wasn't anybody with the boat. Okay, so um, trying to trying to move it along here because I'm going to run out of time. Okay. So uh, eventually you move up the river, you get to a waterfall area um, that may be the end of the line for the the search for the treasure of the Trinity. Um, you find some clues there on on a big rock, and uh, there's diving going on, trying to. Um, find out what's going on. So you're all in that area. In fact, you lose, one of the guys loses his um, backpack filled with all the uh, notes at one point, correct? Yeah, they had a notebook of the team leader in his backpack. And uh, when he when he fell in the water, the currents there, it was right next to a waterfall. So it was it was uh, pushing, you know, pushing him down. And we were, he was able to get back to, you know, swim somewhat, get back to shore. I think Megan had grabbed him, grabbed, got, a, got a hold of a stick and was able to stick out and pull him back in. But yeah, we were following clues. We found this big rock uh, with a uh, with a mark, some markings on it, and um, those markings um, were pointing us to the rock we pulled out of the huge rock that, that was sitting on it, or you know, in a little crevice, wasn't indicative of that area. And so apparently it came out of this one area where they have these type of round rocks with this color coloring. And it was, it was in the river. It was in the river. So that's that was the next clue that led, led us to go uh, to this other area uh, of the river. Well, we're going to have to take a break here. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about what we find, what, what we find, what you found in the caves 
and how come there was never really a season three of Treasure Quest, the Snake Island that goes into a different direction. As I say, if you take a look at uh, www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com, a lot of this is laid out on the blog uh, as the program progressed. I did a kind of an update every day on it so that uh, or every week, so people know what was uh, going on and some of the impressions we got and some of the things we found, like that the uh, mission was sort of a tourist attraction there by a nice city and uh, things like that. It just didn't quite fit into the whole concept of this um, treasure hunt. Uh, the website you might want to look at is www.captainkeithplaskett, that's P-L-A-S-K-E-T-T dot com. For more information about him, we will be back right after this. I am here with Keith Plaskett also known as Cappy from Treasure Quest uh, Snake Island. I don't know why I forgot the Snake Island part for a minute there. <laughs> when we left, we were at a waterfall. People were diving into the water. Um, you'd followed the clues that had been scattered for you by the production people, apparently. And uh, I guess Megan dove down into a cave and came up with a uh, rather fascinating icon. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. She came up with the uh, Tumi, which was an Inca, uh, where you worship the Tumi uh, god, and uh, part of the in Inca uh, religious uh, ceremonial type uh, uh, artifact. So you're you're now you're still near Argentina or Uruguay, somewhere around that area. You're way across South America from where the Inca were uh, located. Yeah, yeah they were they were in Bolivia, uh, in the Andes of Bolivia, and so we were um, well, east of there, in so nor northern Argentina. Okay. So this 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 Incan icon suggests obviously an Incan connection and possibly the treasure of the Trinity. And I think they said on the program that, you know, if it was made properly and it had the right amount of gold on it, it could be worth uh, about a quarter of a million dollars. And you guys were all saying, hey, we found the treasure. We found the treasure. This is it. We've got it. It's in this location. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough question. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't remember that? Well, I remember uh, what they put on the, on the show. Um, that's what I'm saying, on the show. Yeah, what they put on the show. But, um, you know, what, what I basically seen was um, some artifacts that came up. Uh, not only did this uh, to me, which was questionable if it was real or not, in, in my mind, and some artifacts that were uh, uh, some bronze uh, artifacts that were clearly Incan or coming, you know, came from Peru. And uh, those, those looked like they were actually real, real artifacts. And so we're now expecting Treasure Quest, Quest Snake Island will be back for season three because... You're right there. These supposedly have the treasure. You've got to make sure your permits are in order and all of that stuff. And you never came back. What happened? Well, you know, I left the, the show after just generally right after that because um, I just didn't really feel I had some I had some more. I actually had some reality things of my own to be doing uh, on the, uh, you know, undersea exploring in Peru. And so uh, I wouldn't feel I wouldn't feel really feeling comfortable about the way the thing was laid out. And uh, what do, and what do you I'll, mean you weren't well, you didn't feel comfortable about the way it was laid out? Well, you know, we don't see what, what we don't see what we don't see what happens on the show until you actually see it at the same time. We you know, we, we're not told anything. But we're you're just, there. We're there, but we don't know what they're using or how they're using it. They can split these things. They can they can reword what we're saying. They, you know, just the technology is amazing. You know, so I just didn't feel comfortable with that. And particularly, um, you know, some of these artifacts look like they came from Peru. And I'm I've been. It took me a lot of years uh, as a gringo, you know, setting up these pro these programs in Peru to get to gain trust. And so um, I just didn't feel comfortable with what where these may have came from or how they got there or anything else. I, I wasn't sure if they were actually 
part of this treasure or or, or the seated or whatever. So, so you're I, suggesting I just, they might I just have been wanted, I just wanted to get away from this, this drama. And, and there were some chemical uh, chemistry issues with people in the, in the crew as well. So, but but you said you thought some of this might have been seeded in there. You mean planted in there by the production company? Well, you know, God forbid they ever do that, but you know it's possible. <laughs> Well, you've got a, you've got an expertise in the the area. I mean, you taught in the area. We've got I've seen the credentials that show that you're uh, well versed in this sort of thing. What was your react, reaction when you saw these things? What did you think? Well, um, you know, my forte is in marine archaeology, and I, I've been doing all the research along the coast, the history of when Pizarro came and, and the shipwrecks of the uh, the Spanish galleons. That's where my forte is. Not really terrestrial archaeology and this is this is in the realms of terrestrial art, but i have seen because i i go to the, a lot of the museums and and we try to find out things we see we find on shipwrecks of what they are and i recognize some of these items as as being you know peru you know peruvian i mean they were they were like they were llamas you know llamas and there's no llamas in argentina well, yes, but, <laughs> you but you've, you've got this Incan, this Incan sun god um, that they were talking about being worth a quarter of a million dollars. It looks like you found the treasure at the end of the program, and it never comes back. Now you're saying there's there were some issues with the chemistry of the of the the team. Um, well, that's well. Why do you think that? That's the only thing I can guess is why we're you know everybody's not the rest of the team is not on uh, Treasure Quest three except for one of the one of the players. One of the one of the guys that was on the Treasure Quest uh, one and two, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Whalen. Yes. And well, were you fired, uh, or did they just let you know we're not doing another season? How did you fight, or did you just sort of quit? No, we were actually they hadn't told us anything uh, for some time after we'd seen the after we actually seen the season two, and uh, you know I'm a sea captain, I've got projects, but the contracts that we sign is like they have first rights to us so we can't really go do anything get anything long term going unless um unless we you know quit unless we get out of the contract so that's basically what i did i was like well, you know i don't get time for this and uh, so i decided to uh, I, I i wrote them and told them look um you know i, I want to be released from my contract and that was before i found out that you know that they hadn't made changes uh, on the program uh, what? And so that's where I'm at. I'm I'm actually doing the real thing. But the rest of these folks are I don't know what they're doing right now. Well, I I keep coming back to the ink and sun god that they found, and worth an supposedly an awful lot of money. Do you know what happened to that uh, that uh, artifact? No, I have no idea um, if it's if it's even real or you know what. I, I have my suspicions is it probably wasn't, but um, you know. We aren't. We're not privy to any of this stuff. You know, we, we're just we're just meet on the string, go here, do that, and and we weren't given lines to to talk or to say. We we just put in situations and we acted or acted or felt. I, personally, I just if I was in that situation, this is what I'd say. This is what I do. You know, and so that that's where I was at on this. Well, let's let's. I let's, don't know anything about what happened. I didn't even know. I didn't even hear about the price tag on this until until uh, uh, you would mentioned it. I mean, I don't know where where this price tag came from. Was it on the show? Did yes. Say it on the show? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You think I made that up? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Well, let's. I don't have. I was wanted to t talk about the episode that really got under my skin, which was the one where you had the flashback to Vietnam, and I really <laughs> don't have. I don't have time to get into that fairly. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, as a Vietnam veteran, I've never had a flashback like that which is not to say yours wasn't real, but uh, I have had moments of anxiety and it may be triggered by a uh, old rock and roll song on the radio or something like that, that, you know, I've got to punch the button and get away from that right away. So I understand mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, I think that what annoyed me about that was the um, cheesy announcement at the end about the veterans. I, I, I thought that was very exploitative of the whole thing. You had, you had said that um, a cameraman held you back while the rest yeah. of the team went off. Yeah. He had acted like he'd, he'd hurt himself. And, you know, I, there, there was a lot of stuff going on at the same time, several people around, but they had, had let off. And uh, he said, Oh, I can't, 
I, I need some help. And so, cause he was supposed, he was like the last guy, you know? And so I use I usually trail back on the, on the last person of the, of the cast members when we're going down a trail. Cause I want to see what's going on. And, uh, I don't want to have any surprises. So, uh, anyway, um, he, he got hurt, uh, said he got hurt and something was in his, you know, cut his, he said he, he thought he cut his foot or something in his boot. So, so I'm thinking, Oh God, man, what's going on here? So, the chemistry, the the all the drama going on behind the scenes, which, which I'm not going to go into. Um, basically, I was pretty stressed out at that point. Um, and let me say one thing: that it wasn't just the PTSD from Vietnam. Is the, the most recent in my older age was in, was in Iraq, and so I had two double doses of this. You know, so you can't really equate it to just the one one war. Um, so I, I started taking. I took his boot off and. And it was like, you know, he was like yelling. It was like, oh man, it's like this hurts so bad and everything. And so we, and then we stopped. You know, I said, well, okay, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? You know? He says, look, I uh, just wanted to hold you back. Um, we're going to try to do scene to, to see how long, how far they go before they realize you're missing. You know? Okay, okay, I, I got to stop you there, and I, I, I hesitate to do it because it's great, but I've just run out of time. Okay. Um, right. I, I thank you for taking time to chat with us before you head back to South America. I love the insights you've given us to uh, Treasure Quest, uh, Snake Island, and how things developed and how the program was put together and that sort of thing. Um, uh, what's your website again for uh, for the people? It's uh, www.captain C-A-P-T-A-I-N Keith, K-E-I-T-H, Plaskett P-L-A-S-K-E-T-T dot com Captain Keith Plaskett dot com Okay, thank you very much, Keith. Appreciate your time and uh, please stay in touch. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. We'll chat with you later. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who'd like more information about this, I'll have something up on my blog here uh, in the next couple of days at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. If you wish to get back into the UFO field, which we will do hopefully um, in the next week or so, I, I hope to have David O'Leary on the program to talk about the Project Blue Book on History Channel and the controversy about how that program is put together. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. We have some, I have some stuff about that on the blog as well for the UFOs. Take a look at Roswell in the 21st century because I would appreciate that. And uh, the latest is Encounters in the Desert, which deals with the Lonnie Zamora sighting, which we talked about on the program a number of times with Ben Moss and Tony Angiola and some of those people, you can get a good look at that. I will be back with another special edition of the of a different perspective just as soon as I can get it put together. Thank you all and good night.